Hey. Oh, hi there. Have you heard? No, what? Everybody on YouTube just dropped their Asus ROG Zephyrus G14 review right now. I mean, sure, AMD's new Zen 4 Phoenix APUs are pretty interesting, but they really stuffed a 4090 into a 14 inch chassis. I mean, come on, Asus, what are you trying to put together? A furnace? Um, well, about that. What? Wait. Don't tell me. Ugh. You've got to be kidding me. Yes, my friends, you heard that right. This is the all new 2023 Sephiroth G14. And it's the first notebook in the studio coming with AMD's Zen 4 7940HS. Apart from the new CPU platform, it seems like not much has changed. But guys, under the hood, this thing is loaded with everything you could possibly ask for when it comes to on-the-go gaming and creating. Our review sample comes with the before-mentioned new Ryzen CPU, which is also your only CPU option across most configurations, and Nvidia's flagship mobile GPU, the laptop RTX 4090. In the GPU department, you will have a lot of options when shopping for your very own G14, ranging across the complete mobile Nvidia lineup right now. The 165Hz mini LED panel we can enjoy in our sample is reserved for the high-end 4070, 4080 and 4090 models. And in addition, this puppy can take advantage of 32GB of RAM and a 1TB SSD. On the outside, not that much has changed. While the G14 is again available in white and with the enemy matrix LEDs on the display lid, we got the much more subtle and stealthy looking grey version here. The small 14-inch is a great and clean-looking laptop with no design elements that immediately scream gaming laptop to your surroundings and therefore makes for a great office and work companion. The chassis is made from a magnesium alloy that has a sort of soft touch feel to it. And in addition to being pretty thin for the performance it packs, the Sephiroth comes in at a little bit over 1.6 kg, again making it a fantastic portable performance machine. Regarding ports, the small ROG gamer is well equipped. Still, as we already experienced with the M16 a few weeks ago, placement can be a bit cumbersome and pretty messy if you take advantage of everything that is on offer. On the left side of the chassis, you can find your power connector, HDMI 2.1, a USB-C, which is actually USB 4, and the audio combo port. We tested the USB-C with our CalDigit TS4 dock and a Sonnet Solo 10G 10 Gigabit Ethernet adapter and both worked flawlessly. On the right ASUS made room for a second USB-C and two USB-As, all offering the 3.2 Gen 2 standard. A micro SD card reader is rounding out the I.O. and again for a machine this size, the G14 is not leaving us wanting for a whole lot more. In the maintenance department, upgrade or repair options are limited. While the button panel is removed quickly for easy access for cleaning, for example, the G14 comes with only one NVMe slot, which is of course already occupied, and one SODOM slot. 16GB of RAM are soldered to the mainboard directly, so if you want to upgrade your memory configuration, you are limited to 48GB in total. ASUS equipped the Slim Gamer with a 1080p Windows Hello enabled camera. While it looks alright, we have seen and heard better in 2023 already. Both the keyboard and touchpad remain unchanged from last year, but this is hardly something to complain about. The keys feel snappy with a decent amount of tactility and travel, and the touchpad is doing its job without any hiccups and is a decent size for the 14-inch chassis. While the G14 is a good-looking laptop in itself, once you open this puppy, you are treated with the simply gorgeous 16x10 QHD Plus panel. ASUS is pushing hard with their mini LED tech this year and upgraded the small Sephiroth as well. With a considerable spec boost across the board, this screen checks all the boxes, whether you are using the G14 for games, work, Netflix, YouTube, content creation or everything in between. The matte coating combined with the high average brightness is a treat even outdoors, and thanks to the mini LED backlight, contrast even rivals OLED displays. Color gamut coverage and color reproduction are also excellent, making this one a great option for designers, retouchers or photographers and traveling video editors. 
In addition, ASUS offers their usual assortment of color profiles, and with their option to even toggle the mini LEDs as a single zone, they not only offer one of the best displays in this form factor overall, but they give you a lot of possibilities to configure it to your needs. While measuring response times for this new breed of displays continues to give us some headaches with our current testing methods, ASUS claims 3 milliseconds for the panel. Our numbers differ slightly, but please take those with a grain of salt for now. PWM is present, but with above 5000Hz, it should theoretically not affect too many of you guys. But if this is something you care about or are sensitive towards, please take it into account. Subjectively, the panel is well suited even for fast-paced games, with no ghosting visible. Combined with the speedy refresh rate, you will definitely not lose the competitive advantage in your next Call of Duty match. Alright my fellow gamers, with all of that out of the way, let us finally get to the beating heart of the Sephiroth G14. AMD's new Zen 4 Phoenix CPUs must have been amongst the most anticipated bits of tech in 2023. So let's see if the hype has some merit to it. While Zen 4 was able to impress us with the high-end 7945HX we have tested in the Sephiroth 2 16, the 7940HS in this one has to make do with a single CCD with 8 cores and 16 threads in total. In CPU-only workloads, the new silicon is allowed a maximum of 80 watts and comes with increased specs across the board, compared to last year's 6900HS. In our combined CPU rating, the Phoenix APU might not shake things up as much as its bigger Dragon Range brother, but given that we are dealing with an efficiency-focused chip, performance is impressive nonetheless. Last year's CPUs and machines with a similar form factor are easily left behind, and the G14 can even queue up with something like the 13900H in its bigger sibling, the M16. If you consider that the Intel i9 was running with 100 watts or more, AMD can once again flex its efficiency muscles while offering competitive performance numbers. Apple is not too far behind with its M2 Pro we tested in the latest 14-inch MacBook Pro, and both Intel's HX flagships as well as the before-mentioned 7945HX do still offer much more pure CPU grunt. But then again, you will hardly find any of those chips in machines this small. If you want to dive deeper into our performance analysis for the new Zen 4 chips, please head over to our written review. My colleague Andreas thoroughly dissected the new Team Red Silicon over the last few days, so please check out his article. We are also working on a dedicated video and article about AMD's Phoenix lineup, in which we will also have a look at the performance of the new iGPU D780M, so please make sure you're subscribed so you won't miss it. Our PC mark and cross mark results back up our excellent subjective performance impression. We did not encounter any weird behavior or hiccups during everyday use, making the G14 a great companion for various use cases. Drive speeds are excellent for the PCIe Gen 4 SSD in the Zephyrus, and the slim chassis can also maintain performance without breaking a sweat. Should you want to use the powerful 14-incher for creative applications, it provides very solid numbers in Photoshop while struggling to keep up in Premiere Pro. I took it for a spin for one of our latest videos and could easily edit 6K RAW footage from our Blackmagic camera. Export times have been slightly better with the RTX 4080 and i9-13980HX Acrypt G16 for example. But not only do the core components for this run run at significantly higher wattages, but just putting these two side by side puts the amount of power the G14 delivers into perspective. On the GPU side of things, you might think ASUS's engineers are mad scientists for putting a 4090 inside a chassis this thin. While it is a costly option and the 4080's Q of the G14 might provide similar numbers, the high-end ADA mobile chip actually performs simply insane, even at the lower 125 watts power target. The 2023 G14 easily mops the floor with everything in the same size and weight class and sits within spinning distance of the M16 and some high-end 4080 equipped notebooks like the Legion Pro 7 and the before-mentioned G16. Our Blender results are equally impressive and once more the Sephiroth is punching way above its size and weight class. 
Real-world gaming performance is a bit of a mixed bag. And here the performance gap in our 1080p rating between the Intel HX or Dragon Range equipped notebooks running high wattage RTX 4080s or 4090s is quite substantial. Nonetheless, keeping the size of the G14 in mind, it offers a lot of gaming grunt. But you will not be able to unlock the full potential of the Nvidia mobile flagship in all titles. And something a bit more recent and at higher resolutions, it really depends on the games you are playing. But again, a full-fledged 4090 or even RTX 4080 will probably always be faster. But you would have to go for a much bigger and heavier machine. To give you guys an idea about what to expect from the G14, we tested quite a few games in different resolutions and setting levels. In full HD and high settings, you can take advantage of the native refresh rate of the 165Hz display and get almost 150fps or more in the most common esports titles. 1080p and ultra settings should be a great option if you want to find a compromise between visual eye candy and lots of frames. And the native QHD resolution is a great fit for the 4090 and delivers more than 60fps in almost all games we have tested. Should you own a high-res screen or 4K TV, the Sephiroth delivers as well, but you might dip below 50 FPS in very demanding or less optimized titles. For these occasions, DLSS and frame generation are always an option. We compared a selection of 5 games rendered natively in the 2560x1600 resolution of the G14 with the highest settings and even ray tracing if it was supported. While this nets less than ideal results across the board, enabling DLSS in its quality setting and frame generation easily doubles your average FPS, bringing things safely into smooth territory. While the G14 comes with a vapor chamber and liquid metal, do not expect wonders when it comes to fan noise. In light load scenarios or in its silent profile, the small Sephiroth is actually doing pretty okay. And the performance profile isn't too bad either. Turbo though can be quite audible, but I would personally say it's quite alright given the performance and especially the form factor of this 14 inch powerhouse. We took some noise samples under various loads for you and for our detailed measurements, please head over to our written review. So let's talk about battery life. Efficiency has been the strong suit of the last gen AMD CPUs. They haven't been able to keep up with Intel when it comes to performance, but the majority of Ryzen equipped laptops offered longer runtimes in general. While Zen 4 closed the performance gap to Intel, they unfortunately also had to give up some of that precious battery life benefit. With roughly 7.5 hours in our Wi-Fi standard test, the G14 is not exactly offering bad runtimes. I guess it's just that we all had higher expectations. Alright my fellow gamers, it is time to wrap this up. With the first generation of the G14, ASUS ROG basically invented the 14-inch gaming and performance notebook category. And they did a great job balancing the compromises that are needed to make a thin and powerful notebook work. Personally, I think the high-end sample we have here is the pinnacle of that compromise, offering unmatched performance in a thin, lightweight and premium quality chassis. The GPU might not run to its full potential, but if you can live with less memory and the performance benefits in creative applications, you can always opt for the mid-range SKUs with the same chassis. The new Zen 4 7940HS is also a great fit for this small performance machine and delivers solid CPU grunt without overwhelming the still very robust cooling system. ASUS's displays are almost class leading across the board in 2023 and this also holds true with the G14. With great features and optimized software support you should have no complaints about the QHD panel no matter what you are doing with your very own Zephyrus. But please guys let us know what you think about the 2023 G14 and which GPU option would tickle your fancy. 
That would be it for today. Please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. It helps us tremendously. Thanks a ton for watching. My name is Alex. You have been absolutely amazing and I cannot wait to see you all in the next one. Take care.